Welcome to CADSharp.com. My name is Keith, and in the next few minutes I want to show you exactly why our course, Automating SolidWorks with VBA, is the fastest and best way to learn the SolidWorks API. This 13-hour course was designed for those of any skill level. If you already know programming and API basics, you can jump right to the topics that interest you. If you're a total beginner, just watch the tutorials in order and you'll have no problem grasping the concepts. The first unit is where we cover VBA programming essentials. VBA is the same language you can use to write macros in Microsoft Excel and Word, and it's a great stepping stone to more complex programming languages, so the benefits of this unit extend well beyond SOLIDWORKS. As you program alongside me, you'll learn how to work with variables, implement conditional logic, repeat code, create user forms, and work with files and folders on your hard drive. Since professionalism makes all the difference in programming, I'll also teach you best practices like how to format, document, and modularize your code. The next unit begins our journey into the SOLIDWORKS API, starting with the strengths and the weaknesses of the macro recorder, followed by writing a macro from scratch using the API help. The next lesson, 2.3, is quite possibly the most important lesson in the entire course because I explain to you the structure of the SOLIDWORKS API object model. If you want to truly understand the SOLIDWORKS API, you must understand its object model and how to navigate it with the API help. That's why the rest of the course is designed to continually reinforce your understanding of the object model so you leave with the true expertise of the API and not just a lot of code samples. In the next unit, we begin exploring how to accomplish specific tasks with the API, starting with creating, opening, switching, and saving documents. Next, we look at configurations, covering not just the basics, but also how to save out configurations as individual parts. In Lesson 3.3, you will learn how to traverse, add, delete, and modify document and configuration-specific custom properties. Next, you'll learn everything you need to know about working with pre-selected objects and programmatically selecting objects, learning many of my own tips and tricks along the way. Lastly, in this unit, I'll show you how to modify system and document options. Next up is part creation, beginning with creating, dimensioning, and traversing sketch entities. For one example, I'll show you how quickly you can write a macro used to determine whether sketches have the same number of sketch segments before they are used as loft profiles. Lesson 4.2 is one of my favorite lessons because you'll learn the robust capabilities for creating, modifying, and traversing features. Several API programming pitfalls and their remedies are discussed, so you don't want to miss this one. Lesson 4.3 covers in great detail how to search for bodies, faces, edges, or vertices based on underlying geometric data, a crucial skill for any serious automation project. Things really start to heat up in the unit on assembly automation. Right away we dive into a great example in which knob components are added and mated to every hole of a certain size on the selected face of a drawer. The next lesson covers a real-life example in which a macro is needed to create intrusion boundaries around every selected component using the bounding boxes of the components. As a result, you'll learn how to traverse components, modify component display states, edit parts, and create new parts and subassemblies. Last up is an in-depth look at component transforms, which are used to change a component's location and rotation without using mates, or convert point data from part space to assembly space and vice versa. Next is our invaluable set of lessons on drawing automation. In the first lesson, we write a macro that creates a drawing with an isometric view annotated with balloons, a bomb table that pulls data from a custom property, and a second sheet containing an auto-dimension standard three-view layout. You'll also learn how to create, traverse, delete, and move annotations such as balloons and dimensions. Lesson 6.2 covers advanced drawing automation techniques, including determining view orientation and relocating views using view transforms, breaking alignments, adding section views, traversing underlying model topology, and dimensioning individual entities on a drawing. Many important distinctions between drawing views and their underlying models are discussed. In Lesson 6.3, you'll learn how to write a batch operation macro that updates all of the title block notes in the drawings in a specified folder and outputs the results to a text file. Last but not least is our advanced unit where some of our most valuable training is kept. Starting off, we teach you how to control Excel from a SOLIDWORKS macro in order to pull point data in from a spreadsheet and create a 3D sketch. In Lesson 7.2, we cover one of the most powerful aspects of the API, event notifications, which allow you to run code only when a certain event occurs, such as opening or rebuilding a SOLIDWORKS document. 
Next I show you how to create bodies on demand without using standard features, often used when creating macro features or for increasing performance during body related calculations. Next you'll learn how to create your own property manager pages to give your user interfaces a native SolidWorks look. Finally, in the last lesson I show you how to write custom SolidWorks features to create or modify bodies or to simply run calculations or custom property updates during every rebuild. That concludes our look at the course contents. With a premium membership, you can begin watching any of these videos immediately, not to mention that our huge VBA macro library containing over 200 macros is open for you to search and download from. As a bonus, you'll also have access to the presentation I delivered at SolidWorks World covering the 99 must-know methods and properties of the SolidWorks API. Finally, CADSharp is an interactive community, meaning that on any video or macro page, you are more than welcome to ask me questions for further help and guidance. Thanks for watching.